Prince William Sound is simply one of the more lovely and productive and unique coastal habitats in southern Alaska. It's, uh, it's one of the deeper fjord ecosystems that was formed when the continental ice sheets stretched out through Prince William Sound and offshore about 20 or 30 miles oh, six or 7,000 years ago. This carved a great hole, a great depression in the Sound. So we don't have a lot of benthic, a lot of bottom production in the Sound. But the un uniqueness of the Sound, I think, is that we've got several hundred small streams feeding into the Sound with a considerable amount of rainfall, as much as two or 300 inches a year. This, uh, this is prime habitat for salmonids, primarily pink, chum, and silver salmon, and some kings, and in certain systems, red salmon. The, uh, these salmon lay their eggs, the pinks largely lay their eggs in the lower intertidal uh, reaches of the streams, and up into the, the near, subtitle, near intertidal reaches of the streams as well. The, Phytoplankton and zooplankton production in the sound is, is so tremendous that the larval salmon, when they emerge from the streams and go out, to the, go out into the near shore zone, find a ready-made ready food source for them and do quite well. These fish spend a month or two months in this nursery that Prince William Sound forms, and then they exit to the sea and return one to three or four years later. So in the springtime, we have a tremendous bloom of phytoplankton. Some zooplankton and other phytoplankters drift in through Hinchinbrook entrance and become entrained in the sound for a 20 to 30 day period. So we have this natural catchment and localized production of phytoplankton and zooplankton, which are the food source for a lot of the pelagic fishes, such as herring, uh, the juvenile salmonids, sand lance, things like that. These fish, in turn, bring uh, tremendous productivity in marine mammal populations, things such as harbor seals, humpback whales, killer whales, uh, several other the great whales. Um, and also, there, is some, so, there are some shallow shoaling areas where we have some crab and mussel, intertidal mussel shellfish populations that support probably the densest concentration of sea otters anywhere in the world. Right here in Orca Inlet, we probably have two to four or 5,000 sea otters just within about a 10 square mile geographic range, probably the densest sea otter population any, anywhere in the world. Adjacent to Prince William Sound is the Copper River Delta, which is the largest contiguous wetlands left along the Pacific coast, a very, about a 70 mile long uh, intertidal mudflat grassland wetlands, which is tremendously productive in invertebrate populations and grasses and shrubs and such. And it's thus a very important stopover for tens of millions of water, waterfowl and shorebirds on their northward and southward migration to Alaska in the spring and fall. Our salmon production can rival southeastern Alaska. Um, and thus, we've got a tremendous concentration of great whales, the humpback whales, fin whales, uh, minkies, the smaller of the great whales, and also killer whales. Here in Prince William Sound, we've got perhaps 210 individual killer whales have been identified here by photo identification, whereas in southeastern Alaska, it's probably around 100 and it's a much larger geographic area in southeast. So Prince William Sound is sort of a microcosm of southeast. It's more concentrated. Uh, we've probably got unit, unit of area per unit of area more productivity than southeastern Alaska if you take in the entire southeast put together.